Dr. Pemat, we're talking today on Cure Connections about bladder cancer, but that really is a huge spectrum Sorry. of disease and not every patient has the same type of bladder cancer and the depth that the cancer has affected the, the lining or the muscle of the bladder wall, if you will, can be hugely different. How do we categorize bladder cancer? We hear about superficial bladder cancer, muscle invasive bladder cancer. What does this mean and how is that different in terms of presentation and treatment? So it does make a big difference, the depth of invasion of the bladder cancer. So the bladder is a muscular structure and it has several layers of lining. Most patients with bladder cancer, their cancer is content to stay in that first or second layer and not invade more deeply. And those patients can be treated in the urologist's office with installations into the bladder and that cancer never becomes life-threatening. However, once we see that the cancer cells have the ability to invade into the muscle layer of the bladder, that is a whole different story. The way we tell the depth of invasion is with a procedure tr called a transurethral resection of bladder tumor, or TURBT. It's often called a, a deep biopsy, and it's usually done in the operating room under anesthesia. So it's really the pathologist who can tell us under the microscope After that whether... procedure, right, the tissue has to be examined under the microscope to see how deep those cells got. So we're really having the urologist remove the spasmin, the tissue that looks abnormal, and then the pathologist will report back as that's to right. whether that's a superficial tumor just involving the lining of the bladder or right. down into the deeper, the bladder muscle. Right, once we see tumor cells in the muscle, we know we have to recommend a totally different treatment approach than bladder cancer that's just stayed within the first layer of the bladder. And for patients who may have the superficial form, if they have the initial surgery, is it always the situation that that resolves the problem or is it possible to get recurrences even if you have just a superficial type of tumor? Right, so superficial tumors that are treated with treatments that go into the bladder, Sometimes those treatments are 100% effective and there's no further treatment needed. Oftentimes, however, additional treatments are needed in the bladder and then if the cancer progresses, as we've just discussed, by going into the muscle layer of the bladder, that's when we start to talk about a whole different type of surgery, a surgery to actually remove the bladder, in the case of men, the prostate and the lymph nodes surrounding it. Again, because we know the cancer that can go into the muscle can go beyond the muscle right. and outside the bladder. And so in order to give patients the best chance of cure, we mm -hmm. recommend a lot big surgery. Michael, you were telling us about how when the urologist looked inside, they described these areas that looked abnormal. Mm -hmm. When did the urologist first use the word cancer to you and how certain were they that that was the diagnosis at the time? Was that on his initial? No, not on, I, don't, I don't believe it was on the initial visit. We scheduled the biopsy, which was uh, uh, d within days, shortly thereafter. Um, had the biopsy, results of the biopsy came back and he uh, set up an appointment to call us into the office. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I got my uh, my diagnosis. So he'd already removed the tissue, he had the pathology tissue report. Tissue examined, And Correct. you went back to the office with Sandy, did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what did the urologist tell you about that initial pathology report? Um, he said, well, I have some bad news, but it's not terrible news. He says, you do have cancer, but it's treatable. And, uh, you know, it's not like all hope is gone. We have we have things we could do to take care of this for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, which is always a good thing to hear that there's hope, so. And at that point, did you already suspect that the pathology may have come back? Yeah, I did. You did. And I did. Before you got the biopsy results, obviously there was an interval between having the biopsy and following up with the urologist. Had you done any of your own reading, been on Dr. Google at that point or no? No, no, I, I really didn't. Um, in a sense, I'm embarrassed to say that maybe ignorance was bliss. I, I didn't want to dwell on, mm -hmm. on, uh, on anything yeah. negative at that point, even though I kind of felt like, um, you know, it's probably cancer. But I wanted to hear what they had to say. And so. did your urologist tell you at that point whether it was superficial disease or whether it was involving yeah, we went the in, muscle? Yeah, yeah, he got the uh, whiteboard out. We went into a big explanation about uh, uh, stage one cancer, stage two cancer, depth into the muscle. Mm -hmm. And um, he was calling uh, my cancer stage one. Uh, 
not necessarily muscle invasive Correct. at that point. Right. And um, yeah. that we have treatments for it and that we're going to begin a what they call a BCG treatment. Mm -hmm. And as it was explained to me is that they were going to put a, uh, uh, a virus inside my bladder to coat the bladder to jumpstart the immune system to attack those, you know, attack the, the virus that would be coating the uh, So that was the initial things. treatment that followed from the biopsy? Correct. Sandy, you were with Michael when he heard the diagnosis right. of bladder cancer. Um, how, how did you take that news? Well, you know, it was scary, but the doctor seemed very um, confident that the BCG would be something, especially since it wasn't muscle invasive. Um, so even though it was scary, the good thing that happened was we walked out of the office and he threw his cigarettes away. That was good. So he warns you about the, the risk of smoking and that hearing the diagnosis was enough to make you quit there and then. Yeah, you know, if you heard the term, boy, if you could ever turn back the, the hands of time, I would mm -hmm. have never smoked. But unfortunately, I was a, mm -hmm. a regular, uh, I used tobacco regularly. And um, easiest thing to quit when... Uh, when they tell you when this. When they tell you <laughs> yes, cancer. Of course. I, I, of course no uh, desire to ever do anything so foolish again but yeah. at the time yeah chantix yeah. didn't work well well butrin didn't work you know previous attempts at quitting yeah but cancer work though. yeah cancer work <laughs> unfortunately unfortunately was it easy to just stop cold after Absolutely. smoking all those years yeah 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 it all depends on your mindset really